Hello and welcome to the Pharmacy Informatics Professor 2020 with your host, Dr. Armin Simonian. Today I want to talk about my favorite informatics topic, clinical decision support. If you've been following along, we went through our database basics and we realized that our electronic health records are really large databases. So if you've gone along with the evolution of these building blocks of large databases, departmental systems, our electronic health records, and with electronic health records, we're able to implement e-prescribing and CPOE. And with that comes the ability now to apply some expertise, some expert knowledge, some guidance to the provider so that we are prescribing the optimal medication therapy. So I want to get into our presentation today and introduce the topic of clinical decision support. And in the second part of this video, which will be a separate episode, I will go a little bit deeper into a couple of specific areas of clinical decision support. But as always, let's start with some definitions. So let's bring this up. And we're talking about any computer program designed to provide expert support for health professionals making clinical decisions. I have some more definitions here. I won't read through all of them, but I'll point out some of the keywords. So we are using knowledge bases, which we've talked about before, to help with clinical decision making. And we're talking about patient-specific pieces of data, items of data, that uh, can be used to generate case-specific advice. And then we're talking about knowledge and person-specific or population information that we can filter and use to provide some guidance on prescribing. So what are the components of clinical decision support? You have to have an inference engine. So this is the logic that links the patient specific information with the information in the knowledge database. The knowledge database has clinical knowledge built into it. And then we have to have some kind of a communication method and the most common one we think of with clinical decision support is uh, pop-ups during order entry, but we will discuss uh, quite a few different mechanisms. So the types of CDS, we have passive CDS. This is where we're not actively doing anything with any lists or alerting the provider who's writing the prescription for the medication. We're basically providing sets of orders, order sets, that will guide them in therapy, tall man lettering to help with look-alike or sound-alike medications, and then limiting the selections on drop-down lists so that um, the prescriber is really guided on what's on the formulary and what they can prescribe. We have non-interruptive CDS, and this is active, non-interruptive, and this is where the computer during the order entry process can take an order and place it on a work queue. So if pharmacy does consults in aminoglycoside or vancomycin dosing or other areas, then um, that patient that's prescribed that medication can be put on a work queue for follow-up. And then we have active CDS. Now this is interruptive. So it's a just-in-time alert and it can be rules-based. So you can write expert rules and you can also use the database alerts that are built into our electronic health records utilizing our knowledge bases. So the common types of clinical order checking that occur are allergy checking, drug-drug interaction, food-drug interaction, duplicate therapy, and dose range checking. You'll see these kind of as standard um, types of CDS that are provided with most EHR systems. Then we have reference information. Sometimes we, we have um, little buttons, info buttons that are built into our systems. And then um, I talked about order sets, and these are evidence-based medicine order sets or best practice, expert rules. And then now we're really seeing um, in the modern day kind of uh, applications more of artificial intelligence, or cognitive computing to help us screening orders and verifying orders. With allergy checking, you use uh, coded allergies. So the computer can't check an allergy unless the 
drug is coded and it's able to check against its knowledge base. And the coding usually is with a standardized vocabulary. We've talked about these before, such as SNOMED. And then the uh, EHR vendor is contracting with a knowledge base vendor and they provide the codes and then they write the code within their system to link all of that up. So what are some of the um, challenges? I mentioned allergies must be coded and um, the systems nowadays aren't really great at distinguishing between side effects or intolerances and true allergies. So we have to really work on improving that. <clears throat> Drug interaction checking medications are coded again by the knowledge base vendor and we can customize levels of alerts. So uh, drug drug interactions can have um, drugs that have to be avoided that are contraindicated and then others where you can kind of play with the dose or uh, modify or pick an alternate medication in that category and avoid the serious drug-drug interaction. Alert levels are very conservatively assigned by the vendor because they want to make sure that they are covering all their bases in terms of providing uh, the best information without any possibility of, of leaving things out. But then what we do is we end up with over alerting in these situations. Uh, research and ongoing maintenance of interaction levels um, are a lot of work. So if you want to customize your system and minimize unnecessary alerts, then that takes some work to get that done. Duplicate therapy checking. Again, uh, medications are coded. And these tend to be very uh, problematic because you get too many alerts. And a lot of systems um, the users will actually request that the duplicate therapy checking be turned off. There are a lot of challenges uh, with alert specificity and the prescriber gets a lot of nuisance warnings. So um, it's really tough to implement this type of duplicate therapy properly. Usually we go to custom rules for specific um, combinations that we feel are the most dangerous but um, this is one of the CDS types that is available. With dosage range checking, this is something that usually is not provided by the EHR. Um, the user has to build this into the system. So our pharmacy informaticists will lead teams of experts and go in and they can define ranges based on a lot of different parameters, dose form, route of administration, patient age condition, weight-based dosing and body surface area dosing. So there are a lot of possibilities here, but you can imagine even for a drug like acetaminophen, based on age and route, the dosages can vary widely. And so we do have some challenges with that. Order sets, I mentioned before, are pre-established uh, sets of orders based on a condition. It's using evidence-based medicine. So we go to the literature, we find out what the literature says about a certain disease state, such as uh, community-acquired pneumonia and how to treat it. And then uh, we always want to look for best practices determined by the service line. So if cardiology feels that a certain set of orders should be used in acute coronary syndrome, then um, those orders can be placed together. And so the challenge is sometimes we don't have the evidence behind it. And sometimes we have different uh, opinions between service lines. And then we have difficulty actually measuring outcomes. With rules, the demand for rules is really uh, usually pretty high. And what rules can do is you can customize and suggest screenings, uh, suggest treatment plans, and warn of abnormal results. We wrote a rule in one of our previous episodes recommending a vaccination for influenza. And if you went through that programming example, then you kind of know what rules logic might look like and how we might use rules. So there's usually a high demand for these. They're really hard to program. You have to write, test, deploy, monitor, and then deactivate when the rule has done its job. So a lot of effort involved there. 
I've talked before about the continuum between data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. And here is a CDS rule example that goes through all these levels where you define the warfarin tablet. And you know that a lot of patients in your hospital are on warfarin and are getting uh, INR lab tests. And then for a specific patient, you have knowledge that there's an active order for warfarin and the INR result is um, higher than a protocol. And so our wisdom is to set up an alert that alerts the prescriber uh, about the, the issue and um, provides them an opportunity to correct it. With cognitive computing, I don't think we're there yet, but we might get to the point, there's a lot of effort in this area now where the computer can actually screen orders for us, um, do some checking, looking at all the data that's in the system and kind of learning about our patients, learning about uh, problematic orders and really focusing in on those. So we're headed in that direction. I think this is kind of one of the leading edge uh, technologies that's being applied within electronic health records and pharmacy systems specifically to help the pharmacist because we do legally have to review every single order, right? Before the first dose is given to the patient. And if we can have the computer help us go through all of those orders, um, that really increases our efficiency and effectiveness. So in summary, positive outcomes with CDS, it can decrease adverse drug events, length of stay and cost of therapy. And then the, one of the negatives is it's time consuming and expensive to kind of manage. And the worst part of CDS, which we deal with all the time is alert fatigue. So if we warn the practitioner too much, if the prescriber is always getting uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten warnings for each order that they put in, they become very desensitized to those warnings, we'll ignore them, and then the, the really um, bad part of this, the downside is that they might bypass those warnings completely, and that basically eliminates all of the positive strengths of clinical decision support systems. Hopefully this has been a good introduction. I haven't read through every word on the slides, but you can go back and pause the video and look at the definitions and categories and get an, a good idea of what we're talking about when we talk about clinical decision support. And in the next video, I'll take a deeper dive on a couple of these areas, such as allergy checking and drug-drug interaction to give you a little bit better idea of what the pharmacy informaticist might face in terms of implementing and maintaining these systems. So if this was helpful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and I'll thank you for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, look after the health of others and take care, we'll see you next time.